So what happened when y'all were on your way home time? Y'all just ran into the roadblock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't there when that part happened. They just, what'd they do? What you guys ran into? Well, the guy stopped us in it. And then he, oh, well, let's go down to Jones Trader Park Road. And I said, well, I live two houses down here on the right. He said, well, let me ask the boss about that. Oh. He went to the radio for a while or something. And then he <laughs> said, what's your name? I said, Grant Harden. And uh, he said, can you step out of the car? And, and uh, then he put me in handcuffs and put me in the back of that one car. Oh, the, the mm -hmm. canine one you were talking and about? Then, uh, and then dragged him up me and put me in another car. And Way more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Well, I, uh, he is. He's a really good guy. He's a good cop. I've learned a lot from him. <clears throat> were you were all in your, uh, is it your wife's car? Mm -hmm. The one that she, that she was driving mm -hmm. in? Is that it? Uh -huh. I'm going to ask you, please forgive me. No, you're not. But I'm just going to have to stick back to my Yeah, no, anytime. Silence. I'm just a chit-chat. I know you are. You're fine. If you feel comfortable. I appreciate you. Yeah, if you feel comfortable, you don't have to say anything. But, you're fine. But I, I just hate being rude. But I'm no, you're not being rude. Yeah, no. Hey, just chit-chatting. I get it. I really do. All right, Greg, what do you got? So this time we're back to non-pertinent, but he, these are known facts. So if he starts to resist, I would do a forward and backward pass. I know how he got arrested. I know all of those things. When I say forward and backward pass, when people lie, they practice their lie forward. They rarely practice their lie backwards. So if I say, hey, what time did you get to the liquor store? If somebody's a liquor store. Okay, what time did you leave your house? And there's distance between there. This comes to mind for one we recently covered. Then you ask, why did it take this long to get from here to here? Because there's a path in there. But if a person's thinking forward, they're always going to have all the details. That's the reason I always say everybody has known all the stuff we're talking about in the past. We just turned it off because it's rude. What we do is rude by nature, because a person will say they knew their story forward and backward. So backward pass, take the story apart, and you'll find lots of loops. Even though these are known facts, he's still in that resistance posture. When she gets down to details about what he was doing, look at, Chase, you call it a stop gesture, but those emphatic fingers and then silence. And he withdraws his feet back into his own space. And while his fingers... I love the fact he does, now I'm going to call it Phantom of the Opera because his fingers are spread <laughs> and he's playing a keyboard. So it's just crazy to watch, even though these are known facts. It means she's inside his brain case now and she has real estate. Now we've got him where we want him. Now we'll start to see some change. Now, whether it's fast enough or whether you close or not is up to you. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think this is where she shows how focused her listening skills are. Because after she asks about the car, he answers and he starts talking. And uh, as as soon as he makes that short little grunt sound, he stops talking. As soon as he makes that short little grunt sound, he goes, uh. she, when she, because she just started talking, she snaps it shut, just really, really quiet. So I, because she's listening, she wants him to talk. She doesn't want to run over him. I, that almost gave me chills. It was so fast. But what he hasn't said in here is what we talked about earlier. He hasn't said, I'm not going to talk anymore. I want a lawyer because they're not over. I, I know there's questions about, oh, maybe they, they've they uh, gone too far. And they should, we discussed this earlier about maybe, you know, they, they should leave him alone or shouldn't continue questioning, but they're not badgering him. She, that, maybe that's why they sent her in because she's just sitting there shooting with him. There's, there's nothing happening that looks and sounds like. You can't say she's badgering him. Because she's sitting there goofing around with her fingers and just talking and laughing, and he's laughing. He doesn't look badgered. He doesn't look like anything's really bothering him. That's his, that's the problem there. He doesn't look like it's bothering him. So he should have said, I'm not talking anymore. I want a lawyer. Then that would be the game changer for him. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, this is a moment because we've seen all kinds of little abrupt things. We've we've seen bits of this. Uh, we've seen little sounds coming out of his mouth, but we haven't seen anything where it's uh, 
where it has that abrupt guttural sound to it and the movement and the silence afterwards, that freeze situation where we've got this confluence, this collision uh, of, of, of uh, all at the same time. You know, what would be interesting is to experience that in the room because I think the sound that he makes there and the abruptness there would probably have on any of us and you watching now would have quite a big reaction in your stomach. So I think, I think Scott, you're right. She is listening there. And I, and I think as well, the sound that he made there and the movement that he made would stop her as well to work out what's going on here because something's going on which is even bigger than anything that we've seen before now i can't quite remember what they're talking about or but it'd be interesting to go but well you'll be able to go back won't you and work out what was being talked about there and and how is that so pertinent that he's gone way out of his baseline, a, a, a confluence of gestures and sounds that we haven't seen before. Uh, Chase, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I agree with you guys. Uh, the moment you see his hands come into the stop gesture, you know something's about to happen in this video. So watch for this in any conversation that you're in. Even if you see the fingers go all the way to the maximum like that, no matter what somebody's hand is doing, if it's on their leg, hanging out on their side, you're about to encounter some kind of what I would maybe say a conversational roadblock. So if you see this, there's 11 ways that I teach to overcome this little conversation stopping devices that you will very often see in interrogations. Let's go over five quick examples, super fast ways that you can overcome that objection or stop the conversation the moment you see one of these stop gestures and start on a new direction. The first one is mimicking. You mimic the gesture in a slightly more pronounced way so that they see that you're about to stop your train of thought and then you can speak for just a moment. It gives you a perfect window of opportunity to talk. The second one is distraction. And this is just instantly introducing a completely unrelated topic like why mcdonald's ice cream machines are always broken it doesn't even matter what you want to talk about or a question to throw them off balance uh, and reset you want to reset their frame of mind and divert their attention right there next would be reframing and uh, this is just immediately re-describing things in a more positive light that makes them more honorable or a better person Fourth would be empathy. And this is just communicating that you know how they feel and reducing their discomfort by doing that. And finally, I think uh, one of the more basic ones is pace and lead. So this is just acknowledge that their discomfort, they're experiencing discomfort, then subtly shift the conversation towards a more neutral or positive topic. And you can combine all of these things to make it a lot more powerful. But also keep in mind that these tools are super basic and some advanced training will give you more than you could ever imagine. It'll make what I just said that's extremely powerful. You'll realize it's kind of a kindergarten level as powerful as it is. Uh, before we go to the next video, I'd just like to say to everybody that when Chase said McDonald's ice, uh, ice cream machines are always broken, that was simply opinion. I'd like to say that that to McDonald's right now, <laughs> simply opinion. Uh, he and, and the behavior panel have no data around that. Certainly when, when I have visited McDonald's ice cream machines, they've always worked brilliantly. Just Just thought we should say that. I've never gotten ice cream from there. Have you guys gotten ice cream from there? When I was a kid. Yeah, and, and the oh. ice cream machines work brilliantly. One of those tape replays. So what happened when y'all were on your way home time? Y'all just ran into the roadblock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wasn't, <clears throat> I wasn't there when that part happened. They just, what'd they do? When you guys ran into them? Well, the guy stopped us and then he... I don't want us to go down to Jones Trader Park Road. And I said, well, I live two houses down here on the right. He said, well, let me ask the boss about that. Oh. He went and got to the radio for a while or something. And then, <laughs> and 
said, what's your name? I said, I'm Grant Harden. And, uh, and he said, can you step out of the car? And, and, uh, and they put me in handcuffs and put me in the back of that one car. Oh, the, the mm -hmm. canine one you were talking yeah. about? And then dragged him up and, and put me in the other car. And Way more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Right. Well, He's, He's a really good guy. He's a good cop. I've learned a lot from him. <clears throat> were you were y'all in your? Uh, is it your wife's car? Mm -hmm. The one that she, that she was driving? Mm -hmm. And is that? Huh? I'm gonna ask you, please forgive me. No, you're fine. But I'm just gonna have to stick back to my. Yeah, no, anyhow. I'm thing. just a chit chat. I know you saying. are. You're fine. If you feel comfortable, I appreciate you. Yeah, if you feel comfortable, you don't have to say anything. But, You're fine. But I, I just hate being rude. But I'm no, just, you're not being rude. Yeah, no. Hey, just some chatting. I get it. I really do. If you like this video, get the full body language breakdown and analysis on our main channel by clicking this video right here.